Malicious emails are about as old as the internet itself. Almost as soon as we started being able to send funny cat videos back and forth to each other, bad actors saw an opportunity to access our personal information for themselves. And then boom, the spam email was born. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Cybersecurity Simplified. Today, we're going to be discussing phishing. Unfortunately, these sorts of attacks aren't just in our emails anymore. They've become sophisticated psychological attacks aimed at catching us at our lowest. We can see these in our emails, yes, but also on social media or even on our phones. For the purpose of today, though, we're going to be focusing on one specific type of scam, phishing emails. While there is a lot of overlap between phishing emails and other types of attacks, and certainly knowing how to prevent a phishing email attack might help you prevent other scams, we're going to start by tackling one part of a fairly large set of online scams. That's also because, unfortunately, it's not as simple as me just telling you about a scam that's out there. Tricksters have hundreds, if not thousands, of different scams that they use, so that wouldn't benefit us by just running through the laundry list. So instead, we're going to work through some common threads that these phishing emails will use, and hopefully at the end of this video, you'll walk away with a toolbox that will help you protect your information. We're going to walk through how to tell if an email is real or not a little bit later, but first, what does a phishing email usually look like? They'll often seem to come from a source of authority. So your social media account, your bank, someone you know, like your CEO, for example. These emails often, but not always, will contain spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, as well as language that is either unprofessional or just seems to be out of place. They'll also have a sense of urgency to them, something like a one-day deadline, something that pushes you to act quickly. Then there'll be some sort of link or attachment that you're asked to click on, and this is where the phishing happens. This probably goes without saying, but don't click on any links or attachments in emails unless there really isn't any other option. One link or one attachment may not seem that dangerous, so it bears asking, what can one click really do? Well, at the very least, one click on this email will let an attacker know that you interact with, read, and will click on the links for a phishing email. So you will get, oftentimes, many, many more spam emails, which is not a great place to start. Often these links will lead you to very real looking versions of a real site. On the fake site, it'll ask you to log in and send that information directly to the attacker. After that, it will often reroute you to a login error page on the real site, which helps dispel any further sense of suspicion that you might have. Even if you don't end up inputting information into whatever site you end up on, certain unreported vulnerabilities in browsers can give the attacker access to your computer or your currently logged in accounts. This comes with all the dangers of an attacker having access to your personal account and goes back to all of the reasons why we've covered why account security is really important for protecting your personal information. But in this case, it can actually be more dangerous. If the attacker gains access to your information in this way, it means they can use your account information to spread the attack further by pretending to be you. In the case of a malicious attachment, it can actually be worse. It allows the attacker to run code, which gives them access to your computer in a sometimes untraceable way. It allows them to steal, lock, or just have access to anything on your computer. Now, this may come off as fairly scary. And while it is worst case scenario, we're not trying to scare you out of using your email. Of course, there are really important emails and normal emails in your inbox. But hopefully, it gives you enough caution that you are aware that incoming emails could potentially pose a security threat and to be careful when you're interacting with links and attachments. So how do we detect a phishing attempt? What are the giveaways? So as we've mentioned, phishing emails typically have spelling mistakes, grammatical mistakes, erroneous errors. And this is actually on purpose. Scammers want someone who's not paying attention. And they don't want someone who gets part of the way through the scam, realizes what's going on and backs out. They don't want someone that attempts to thwart their scam by changing their password or reporting the email to the appropriate authorities. Unfortunately, however, many of these phishing attempts are becoming more and more sophisticated and more and more convincing. So this begs the question, what can we do in those instances to prevent a phishing attack. Most scams rely on some form of emotional manipulation. In the world of phishing, that emotional manipulation comes in the sense of urgency. Fortunately for us, it's very easy to detect when someone is creating a sense of urgency. Is this email asking you to do something right away? Are they telling you that they're going to delete your account if you don't respond within a certain amount of days? These are all telltale signs of urgency. They're trying to create a sense of panic in you so that you bypass the part of your brain that's able to detect if something is wrong. A good reminder is nothing is so urgent that you can't take a couple seconds to think about it. First, does the sender's information match information you already have? Do you have an account on this website or any relation to the sender? 
If, for example, a streaming service is trying to tell you that you have a late payment, but you know that you pay annually, probably a good sign that they don't know you. Doubly so if you don't even have an account on that platform. Second, does the email line up with other things that you've heard from the company? Does the email come from who it says it's from? Companies like Google, Amazon, and Facebook have teams that are dedicated to communication and keeping consistent imaging across their communication with you. Amazon, for example, is probably more likely to communicate with you via their app than they would by an email. If they do send it via an email, the structure is really, really similar. So if you get an email that looks totally out of whack to what you've received from them before, pay attention to that. Always assume that an email is malicious until proven innocent. The just click here and the sense of urgency are used to get past your judgment. What if you get to the end of an email that has an extremely short deadline and it's coming from an address and an authority that you can verify? Do you still click the link? I wouldn't. I would access the site from a bookmark you already have or by typing in the URL yourself. You might as well use a correct verified access channel. If you're being contacted by an individual you know in real life, why not check in with them on a second form of communication? After all, if it's so urgent, you could probably give them a phone call. In short, I would always independently verify any information that is handed to you, whether it's in text, email, or via social media. And for many reasons, it's probably worth getting into the habit of accessing sites through verified channels that you have used before, whether it's bookmarked or otherwise. So to summarize, ask yourself, number one, is there an unnecessary sense of urgency? Is the scenario that they're presenting plausible? Number two, is the sender legit? Are they asking me for information that they should already know? Are they contacting me the way that they usually do? And number three, if everything else checks out, where can I independently access this information that doesn't come from a potentially compromised source? It's important to recognize that anyone can fall for a scam. We often stereotype and imagine things like only the elderly could fall for a scam like this. I think it's really important to be compassionate, to put ourselves in other people's shoes and see how we would avoid an attack like that in the future. It's almost inevitable at some point that there's going to be an attack held against you. So let's try and be as prepared as possible instead. Our ability to identify scam emails is unfortunately prone to failure. So we don't want that to be the only frontline defense to prevent us from these types of attacks. It's really important to stay on top of best practices for your cybersecurity and keeping your information safe. Assume that any email is guilty until proven innocent and don't trust a contact just because they're from a company that you're familiar with. Perhaps the best tool that you could get from this video is to get into the habit of verifying an email's contents on your own. Instead of clicking on a link, is there a better, more trusted way that you can get there? All right, that is it for this episode of Control Cases Cybersecurity Simplified. I really hope you enjoyed it. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to leave any other topics you'd like to be covered. And thank you so much for spending this time with me.